Today on TriCro Studios, we're doing our first installment of modifying this Ibanez RG3 EX FM1. We're taking this neck off that is feeling a lot more guckier lately. We're going to strip the neck and we're going to refinish it. Some general tools you'll need for this job are. 220 and 400 grit sandpaper, Birchwood Casey True Oil Gunstock Finish, Birchwood Casey Gunstock Wax, Guitar Setup Tool Kit, Super Fine Steel Wall with the 4-0 grade, finest grade steel wall that you can buy, Tack Cloth, New Pair of Guitar Strings, Painter's Tape, 100% Cotton Cheese Cloth, Dunlop's Ultimate Lemon Oil Shop Towel and an old towel. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen our strings and then cut them off. Uh, you're going to want to loosen your strings just so you don't have them snap all over the place. Take your time. This isn't a, a big rush job. You don't want to rush through a job like this because if you do, then you're going to make mistakes or you're going to make it way worse than what it started. All right, now watch out when you go to take your strings off that you don't stab yourself in the eye or cut yourself. So now that we have all of our strings off on our guitar, we need to relieve the tension on the neck. And by relieving the tension on the neck, you're, not, you're taking a bit of that stress off the neck from the strings not being there. So what we're going to do is take off our truss rod cover, stick the proper Allen wrench in, and turn forward. Now, this guitar is already good enough that I do not need to do that because there was a little bit of a bump because of the changes of the season. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to show you that. but it's very easy to do. Once you get your Allen wrench in, be very careful. Quarter turn, like a little bit, goes a long way. Once you're done that, then we'll move on. So now, just to protect from future scratching of the table or anything else that you have on your guitar, I'm going to take off my tuning keys because I'm going to replace them later on in another modification video where we're going to put spurs of locking tuners on. But uh, what we're going to do is take these off now, put them aside so that way they're out of the way and as we're flipping and moving the guitar neck around, it's not going to scratch anything else. So now that we have our Tune keys off, the neck is relieved, strings are off. We're going to flip this guitar over now and we're going to unbolt the neck from the body. One thing to note when doing this is make sure you're supporting the body because the weight of the body is still on the neck. So make sure there's support there so that nothing's going to crack or once the screws are coming loose, you're not going to tear those screws out of the wood. So make sure you have that support. Now a very important part about this part here is slowly bring the guitar over. So with some of these cheaper guitars and some other guitars as well, you may have neck shims. Now neck shims, you're not going to want to remove these because they're there for a reason. And you're going to want them to go back the same way that they came in. So this is a good idea to bring out your phone, tape it like we're doing now to see exactly where these shims are going. So, slowly bring off your neck. And with this guitar, there is no shims, which is a nice feeling to have because it means that everything's seated properly the way it was supposed to. So, right on. So now we're going to move into taping our guitar neck. So 
So here we go, we got the neck off of the guitar and it's actually a quite nice, beautiful neck. I love the inlays on it. And there's a lot of character with the rosewood on this. Uh, the binding is a little bit uh, gross looking. It's got a creamish age color to it, but it's not a problem. We can probably clean that up a bit. But on another hand, this the reason why I keep cleaning my space, as you'll see throughout the video, is the cleaner you keep your workstation, the less chance you're going to have any kind of guck or crap you don't want on the back of your finish. And you're going to be able to spot all those imperfections that uh, you may not if your neck is constantly dirty the whole time. You're going to be able to see what's been sanded not been sanded. So without any further ado, we're going to take our painter's tape. doesn't matter what kind of tape you use as long as it's uh, stuff that's not really bad adhesive because if you have that really sticky adhesive then you're just going to add more problems but you want it sticky enough that it's going to stick to your guitar without doing anything to the finish or tearing anything off so uh, painters tape blue green whatever you find great stuff to use uh, don't be afraid to to mess up rip that whole thing off if it's not clean looking if you have shards and shards of different pieces of paper you're not going to get that nice clean line so uh, just take your time with it and uh, here we go so that's one side taped up very well now it's going to move on to the other side like I said don't be afraid to use lots of tape but the cleaner you can get one full line the cleaner it's going to look, you're not going to have, if you have multiple pieces of tape there, you're going to see the lines all over the place. But if you have one straight line, at least it will be consistent if it's a little bit off. And then we could hit it a little bit with uh, steel wool just to even it out a bit at the end. So that's one side, let's do the other. Now you don't have to put a strip down the middle, but I like to do that because it uh, prevents these pieces of tape here from popping up and any dust getting inside there and then causing the tape to pop up. So even though you don't have to do that, I always do it just because it kind of secures the tape to the fretboard and doesn't allow it to come off on the sides. So now, depending on how you want to do your headstock and try to keep this clean, I'm going to take this off too. And I'm going to find a way to try to make this as nice as possible. If not, I might just go straight across just so it's not interfering or it doesn't look bad. Alright, so she's finally taped up, ready to go. Uh, I was going to try to make that nice little point at the end, but it just doesn't look right if I did that. So that's why I took the tape off and redid it again. I just did a nice sharp line across the back of it just to make it so it's uh, even. And then I'll blend it into the, the top of the headstock. So now that we got everything taped up, everything's good to go, we're going to use our 220 sandpaper. And we're going to go with the grain. Don't do it swirls. Don't go all over the place. Slowly just go with it, take your time. The more you rush, the more mess you're going to make and the faster you're going to pull up that tape. If the tape comes up, put the tape back on there, make sure you're protecting those parts that you don't want destroyed. So, here we go. So looking at this neck, you can't really tell too well where I've missed or ha it's a little bit heavier with the lacquer and I haven't been able to get it all up. So an easy way to tell where I've missed and what I've covered and stuff is take a damp shop towel, just not too wet, just damp, and kind of slowly go up and down the, front, the, the back of the neck. And what this will do is it will highlight everything that I've missed. You'll still have that glossy kind of look to it, but then the rest of it, you can actually see, is a bit shinier, see? 
So you can see where I've missed from this camera. Hopefully you guys can see that. But you can kind of see spots of where the lacquer was heavier and where I've actually gotten the wood. So we'll keep going and then we'll, we'll move on to the next step. That wood is starting to pop now. It looks beautiful. And it already feels much, 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 much better. So now that we've gotten down to the wood with our 220 that we were using earlier, uh, we got all that lacquer off, all that white stuff's gone. Uh, now we're gonna use our 400 if you can find six or eight hundred, that's much better, but this was the, the finest that I could get at the hardware store that I was at. With that being said, you're not trying to take all the wood off, you're just trying to clean uh, the surface and make it smooth. Uh, if you start taking too much wood off, you're going to really start noticing and it's going to start looking bad again. So, I'm going to start now with the 400 and we're going to go from there and you'll see the difference. Yeah, it's starting to look a lot more nicer even than what it did before. Still a little spot there needs to be hit here on the, uh, the back of the neck here. So I'll hit that again and then we should be able to move on to our next step which would be steel wool. There we go. So that is done with the 600. Uh, it seems like I'm doing a lot of sanding. I'm really not. I'm letting the sandpaper do the work. I'm not pushing hard down on the sandpaper at all. So for our next step, we're going to use this steel wool. This is the finest grade steel wool you can get. You can, I don't know exactly what they call it, but it's uh, four zeros fine. That's the finest you can get. That's the stuff that you need to use for this job. So now that everything's ready to go, very clean workstation, the neck looks beautiful. What we're going to do, even though I took a wet piece of paper, towel, or shop cloth, and I vacuumed it, I'm still going to use this tack cloth. And this tack cloth is like a sticky cloth that will take out any extra crap that might be sitting on there or stuck on there. This stuff is excellent for that. Almost looks like it's, it's like a cheesecloth, but it's very sticky. So all I'm going to do is just run that up and down. And that's going to get anything that's like stuck in the pores or just sitting on the surface that didn't come up from the last two uh, ways that I just tried to clean. Even though this thing was very clean, I'll show you here in a second. There's a lot of dirt on this cloth from just doing this once over. So that should be more than enough to keep that surface clean and good to go. I'm going to put my tack cloth aside. So now that we got our workstation all cleaned up, we're going to shake up our true oil really good and we're going to put this on the back of our neck. We're going to let it dry, we're going to hit it with steel wool and we're going to do that three times. And remember, a little goes a long way with this stuff. Oh, just put enough of it on there that so that should be more than enough for right now. Here we go. Wow, look at that pop right away. It looks gorgeous just from that like it's wow.
make sure that you're very thorough and you get the whole thing. And you, like I said, you don't want to put too much of this on. A little bit goes a long way. Put a little tiny bit more on there just to make sure I coat absolutely everything. Make sure I get the by the headstock here. Smoothen it out. Now look at that. Not sure how well you guys can see this in the camera, but it looks stunning for a first coat. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it dries and we get the next two coats on here. So it's been over eight and a half hours now. I didn't intentionally want to wait this long to redo this. Obviously it's really good to go now. Uh, you only need about two hours or a little bit more than that depending on uh, how the temperature is in your house and whatnot and the humidity. But as uh, long as it's not tacky, because if it's tacky it's just going to grab onto the steel wool and then you're going to have metal fibers into the neck and you don't want that. So it's beyond dry now, we're good to go. We're going to steel wool and do our second coat right now. Alright, now we're going to do our third coat. Alright, so our next step here is going to be taking off all the tape. So now that we have our tape off of this neck, you can kind of, see, you might not be able to see it, but there's a small little line for where we taped off. We're gonna use a little bit of steel wool just to get those, those spots, just to smooth it out a bit. I said, I'm not sure if you can see that. That's a little bit more prominent that you can see. But you're gonna wanna smooth that out just a little bit and up at the, the top of the headstock where we taped it off as well. We're going to take our almighty tack cloth here and get anything else that's on this before we start waxing. Alright, that's the removal of any extra crap that we don't need. Now we're going to start using uh, Birch Casey Gunstock Wax. Make sure you really shake this well. Just beautiful. So after about 30 minutes, we're gonna go over this again, just with a clean, nice cloth, brand new one. I use shop, shop towel because I find it's more sturdy. It doesn't pick and leave the mess that some of the other ones do. So we're just gonna go over this again to make sure there's no excess stuff on it just to keep it real clean just to buff it up a bit so this looks absolutely beautiful uh, it's all done now, I'm just going to do the one coat of the wax you can do more if you choose to but I find this is more than enough, Like it looks beautiful it's well protected, it's gorgeous the neck did not look this nice before I started so the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just uh, hit the fretboard a little bit with some of the uh, Dunlop 65 uh, lemon oil just to kind of clean up 
any guck that maybe the uh, tape has left for us. We don't want any of that on there, especially with all the work we just did on this. This stuff's generally very easy to use too. Just use a clean cloth, as like what we have there. That one's good enough because nothing really came off on it. So we're, we're pretty good. I'm gonna fold it in half anyways. But uh, all you do is just dab this onto your fretboard and then just rub it in. Now this seems a little bit excessive, but this fretboard is pretty dirty. So I'm just gonna hit every single fret with a dot of this stuff just to clean it up a bit. As you can see, the dark to the light, you can see how dirty the dark spots are. Now watch how clean this thing's gonna get. And now the fretboard looks much, much cleaner and nicer. Obviously we should do uh, a good fret polish on this, but we'll save that for another video. Until next time, I'm Kevin of Tri-Crow Studios. Please subscribe, stay tuned for a lot more modification videos and gear reviews, and take care.